Downing Street Guard. Britain was first invaded by the armies of Rome in 43 AD. The Emperor Claudius needed a conquest to solidify his grasp on power. This was an army that had conquered most of the known world. First of all, we're going to have a look at the soldiers who made up the Roman army. First of all, we shall look at the legionary soldier. These are citizen soldiers, Roman citizens who joined up. They would sign up for a period of 25 years, and let's have a closer look at the equipment they were given. First of all, these men have large iron helmets with large neck guards, cheek pieces, and brow bands across the front to defend against sword blows. On their bodies, most of them have a type of armour called lorica segmentata, which is strips of iron, which is riveted to leather straps on the inside. This makes it very strong, but also very flexible, so they can both fight and work in it. The lorica segmentata is worn on top of a woolen tunic, which prevents it chuffing against the skin. On their feet, they have leather caligae. These aren't really sandals, they're more like military boots. They're made out of very tough leather, and on the soles, they have hobnails, which both protect the leather and give them excellent grip on grass when fighting. From the last point, point of view of defence is the large scutum. This is a rectangular shield. It's made out of strips of wood glued in differing directions, and it's not something we would recognise as plywood. It's covered with linen, and onto this is painted a design, which we think represents the legion from which the men come. In the centre is a large iron boss to protect the hand in the central horizontal hand grip. Now, when closing to fight, these men would first throw volleys of these javelin, these are throwing weapons. The idea is they'd be thrown in large volleys. So the weight of the wooden handle on top of the long, thin metal neck would punch through most shields and armour if the opponent was wearing it. Once the peeler had been thrown, the soldiers would close with the gladius. This is a short, stabbing sword. They would not fence with this, they would stab, drop the opponent and move on to the next man, perhaps knocking him off balance with his shield. The final weapon they carry is a short, st stabbing dagger called a pugio, to be used if the sword was lost. Next, we shall look at the auxiliary. These are also Roman soldiers, but these are non-citizen soldiers. These are taken from conquered provinces or allied tribes. They're armoured in a very similar way to the Roman soldiers, but often in a simpler and cheaper fashion. They, also, they have similar design helmets, but these are usually made of bronze rather than iron, which is cheaper and slightly softer, and they're not so highly decorated. Their bodies, they wear chain mail. This is in fact a Celtic invention, which predated the legionaries to armour and never ever went out of use. On top of that, they have these elaborate belts. And from that is a military belt, probably to display their, super, their military status. They also have the boots, the caligai, but they have a slightly different design of shield. This is a flat oval shield, unlike the legionary shield, better used for skirmishing. And this reflects the way they fought in not such rigid or large formations. And they also have a different kind of spear. This is a stabbing weapon, known as a haste in Latin. They also have the similar sword and uh, often the dagger on the left as well. We're a short of Celt today, which is uh, where all of you nice people come in. Today you are the Celtic army and you will be facing the legions of Rome. Come on, give me a war cry! Now this is an army you've heard told about around the campfire. Old warriors telling terrifying stories of a new way of war. You are used to fighting battles for honour, to settle old scores. Sometimes battles could be finished with single combat. But this is the Roman army, and they don't fight like that. They've formed up a line abreast. This gives you an idea of the discipline of the Romans, to march in step, to hold the shield wall. Look how well protected they are by their shields. 
from nose to knee. And it's not just a shield wall, it's a row of spikes of swords ready to dance out and stab. If you're going to fight this, how do you attack it? You can attack the bell armoured helmet on the top, but that's easy to block. You can try and bend down and attack the legs, but that would make you vulnerable. You can't go round the sides because they're guarded by the auxilia. How do you fight this? Many people do ask why the Romans didn't armour their legs. And armour is often a case of protection versus mobility. And the Romans didn't need to armour their legs so much. Because with a long flashing sword like many of the Celts used, and possibly a spear, it was very difficult to attack the legs without making yourself very vulnerable. Now, I'm afraid you as the Celts have suffered your first reverse. The Romans have driven you from the field. And they're retiring in good order, protected at the rear by the auxilia. This is a perfect illustration of how the auxilia troops were often used. To guard the Roman soldiers when they're at the most vulnerable, when they were withdrawing. But the auxilias were very good troops in their own right. We do know from Roman authors, they won a battle at a place called Mons Graupius in Scotland, all by themselves, without any troop help from the, uh, from the main Roman legionaries. The centurion inspected men, making sure they're all in the right place. Now you as the Celts have been pushed off the field of battle. You're taking refuge in your stockade. Perhaps you'll be safe behind ramparts of wood and earth. What's the Romans' answer to this? That answer is the testudo, or tortoise. Now as you can see, there's no framework underneath this. It looks rather like a tiled roof, and that's exactly the purpose it's designed to serve like a roof, to defend soldiers underneath from missiles being thrown down at them. There's no framework, but it's incredibly strong. In fact, we know at one time for a display for the Emperor Hadrian, the soldiers ran a chariot across the top of their tortoise to show how strong it was. They close on your stockade. You've perhaps stockpiled rocks and spears to be thrown down on them, but everything you throw at this formation just bounces off Imagine your panic, it's been put together quickly, instantly on the battlefield. You don't have any time to, to boil oil or water, which is the only effective defence against this. And this would not only get the troops up against your walls, it would allow Roman engineers to sneak between the shields and with pickaxes and tools and crowbars to break down your walls that you felt secure behind. <laughs> That's no mean feat, ladies and gentlemen, well worth a round of applause. The torture could be very accurate in trained hands and could even be used to pick off individual commanders in the enemy. You can hear the cranking that's used to bring them back. These aren't drawn back by hand on the whole. They're cranked back with ratchet systems. They're too strong to be pulled back by hand. Another shot from the Onega, again going for range. The Onega, we know, was meant to be at this size, but it could be far larger. It could be built outside cities to pound away at their defenders for weeks on end if necessary. And we know from archaeological digs, some of the shot was up to a hundred weight, possibly using a weapon 30 feet high. But imagine this used en masse. We know that every century had a catapulta, about 60 to a legion, laying down one shot perhaps every 10 seconds. Imagine the barrage, imagine the casualties that would cause. Imagine the shock value of that bouncing into your ranks, smashing your troops. Very few Celtic troops even had armour. Imagine the damage it would do to you. Imagine the effect on your morale. It's all before you could possibly reply. Most Celtic armies had at best some bowmen and some slingers, but they could easily be outranged by these. It's all before the troops come in. Imagine that plunging from the sky down on you, and you've got your safe inside your, your stockade. Two more shots from the catapulta. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Roman artillery!